Well, thank you very much. Uh, uh, we do have some um, uh, benefits uh, from the perspective of the uh, wind engineering, which is, is kind of new to me, the urban ventilation. So if you have enough tall buildings and the lower buildings grouped all together, the the ventilation becomes even better in, in, in urban scale. It's a vertical component. Uh -huh. The flow can improve the situation. Yeah, that's very new to me. Uh, I don't know about you. Um, I guess we are kind of more worried than happy with the tall buildings from what those uh, three panelists say. I think that's because we are the professionals. We are the problem solvers. So we are keen to look at the problems first rather than looking at the benefits of tall buildings. But uh, somebody else might have some different views on tall buildings. So uh, I'd like to ask uh, Ms. Kathy Young, uh, who will answer this question, why tall, from the perspectives of the building owners, maybe? Okay. Uh, when your headache ends, our headache starts. Uh, you, you, you only have to worry about how to build, but we have to worry about how to maintain and, and operate the super tall buildings. But I talk from, uh, about the benefits first. Uh, I, I think there are three levels. Um, uh, two days ago, I heard a presenter uh, saying that uh, it takes a lot of money, and a lot of ego uh, for people to build super tall buildings. And I think uh, it also takes a lot of inspirations. Uh, inspiration for the city or the country to be put on the world map, to be put on the world stage, to let people uh, know about this city or this country. I think that's the case for K, uh, Petronas Tower in KL, uh, for us in Taipei, and also for Burj Dubai, uh, Burj Khalifa in Dubai. Um, so I, I think it's uh, uh, very important that uh, that kind of inspiration would urge uh, this Asian uh, cities of uh, Asian developers to build taller and taller. Um, uh, we, in the very early stage, we have a slogan to uh, bring Taipei to the world. Uh, that is we, we, that, that's really how, how we want to, uh, why we want to build tall building uh, so, so that uh, people would notice Taipei. Um, I think second level is, uh, second um, level is uh, a super tall building in a city really will create a location. Uh, I think that's the case for every tall building uh, in, in any city too. For us in Taipei, the, uh, we also create a new CBD for the city. And um, at the, the time when we were starting construction, uh, that area was still very quiet. And now it's really the CBD of Taipei, all the, all the new leases will be signing into this uh, area. Uh, and the third level really is um, a super tall building is very visible. You can see that building uh, anywhere of the city and it's the prestige and the image of the building. Uh, of course, also uh, uh, the quality comes along with the, uh, the, the, uh, the investment. That um, any, le any leasing agent cannot miss out your building. They have to put you on the property list to show their client. So that's, uh, that's something that's pretty good for, uh, in terms of leasing. Uh, and for challenges, I think uh, uh, really um, is a big challenge to try to operate and, uh, a, a super tall building. Uh, the, the complexity and cost of maintenance is really very high, much higher than uh, you're putting three, four buildings together. So uh, I think that's one thing that's, uh, that's um, really uh, important. Uh, and most of the people here maybe only worry about building the building, but uh, we as property uh, owner and man property managers would uh, have a lot to worry about after the, the tall building is completed. And um, also, um, we have to deal with a lot of tenants. Uh, in, in a regular size building, uh, there's a limited number, but like in our building, we have 12,000 people in the, working in the building, uh, uh, two, more than 2,000 visitors a day to the office space, uh, and uh, 90 tenants that we have to be able to lease up all the space. The, our, our building, when it was completed, is, uh, is like 5, 10 to 15% of the total grade A office space in the market. So uh, we have to start like giving early bird packages. So the, the, uh, trying to lease up a tall building is a big challenge uh, in our case. And maybe in a, in a uh, more prosperous market, it will be an easier uh, task. Um, and uh, you were mentioning about uh, wing, uh, 
uh, higher up, there is more wind. For us, uh, having to wash the windows is a big challenge. <laughs> that uh, maybe on the ground there's not much wind, but uh, you know, and then uh, after 10, 11 hour uh, o'clock in the morning, we won't be able to get our condola out because the wind is uh, too strong. So, so really a lot of issues associated with uh, the uh, maintenance. And um, also, um, as we are the landmark in the city, uh, we are to uh, uh, a great deal of uh, media attention. I remember early on when the building was first completed and when there's a typhoon or there's an earthquake, the uh, news reporters will come to our building and want to see whether or not anything falling off and I have to stay in the wing and say, oh, we're very safe and so on. So, so it's, a, it's a big challenge that uh, people are seeing these landmark buildings with magnifying glasses. Uh, they, uh, everything we do uh, will matter to the media and will attract media attention. Um, I think, uh, of course, uh, safety and security is very important for these uh, landmark buildings. Um, uh, not only for these natural forces, uh, also that we would have some uh, uh, additional security issues like a terrorist attack, potential terrorist attack, whatever. Uh, just a few weeks ago, suddenly um, the, our city police received an email from a certain organization in the U.S. Uh, saying that they want to uh, put uh, some kind of uh, chemical in our building and then uh, destroy the building, whatever. And, and, uh, and uh, news, uh, newspaper will put it as headlines. Uh, of course, it's more likely it's, uh, it's, uh, um, it's, not, uh, it's just uh, somebody playing a, a bad joke. But uh, for us building operators, we, we have to pay special attention to any of this kind of uh, uh, problem. And also, uh, like after, right after uh, September 11 event, uh, the American companies won't consider moving into our building because uh, what, what they experienced in New York. But of course, after some, a while, this, this is uh, okay. So um, I, think, I think for building, tall building is, uh, uh, ha have a lot of benefit, for, especially to these um, uh, new uh, Asian uh, cities or countries that, that want to uh, be seen, but also the challenge of uh, trying to, to fill up the building, to maintain the building properly is, is really a big challenge, a continuous challenge for us. Thank you very much, uh, Kathy. Um, she talked about the pros from the perspective of the building owners and uh, maintaining, maintaining uh, professionals, and I, I think that, that was very interesting. Uh, I'd like to uh, say my opinion as an architect too. Uh, so let us go back to 150 years ago, uh, the late 19th century. There were some kind of expositions in um, London and Paris. And in London, as you all know, uh, there was a crystal palace. And in Paris, there was an Eiffel Tower. That was the era where when uh, we produced the steels and glasses in mass product, massive, massive scale. So that was a cutting edge technology at that time. And those two landmark buildings or towers represented our most advantaged technology at that era. And I think the tall buildings of today should be the same. I mean, it's a symbol or the realization of all the technology that we have uh, built up up to this point to show, it's a showcase of our uh, building technology to put onto the tall buildings and solve many problems that we have mentioned up to this point. I think it's very good for human inspirations in a sense because um, you know, people like to, uh, the idea of uh, the climbing onto the mountain Everest, for what? For inspirations. I think it's almost the same that uh, we build tall buildings to show the, the most advanced technology that we have developed up to this point, and it's a very good example. It could be a very good example, and also, um, well, like we all know, the tall buildings are the vertical city to save lots of uh, transportations and times and energy associated with uh, uh, commuting and those things. So. Um, the, from the architect's point of view, I think it's very good to have some historical landmarks in each and every city. Uh, if you look at the, all the cultural heritage of the, uh, the, uh, this planet, Egyptian pyramid, Pisa's towers, uh, towers, slanting towers, and Louvre, 
and all those things, the cultural heritage are represented by the buildings of the era, the, the ancient era. So I think the tall buildings like a Burj Khalifa or Lotte Super Tower or Taipei 101 will be the cultural heritage uh, from the 50 years from now on. So I think that that's the, uh, one of the benefits of having tall buildings in each and every city, I think. Well, uh, now that we have heard from various fields of expertise about the benefits and the challenges of tall buildings, let us discuss what now? What do we need to know? What do we need to prepare? And what do we need to do for the future of tall buildings? This time, we'll talk freely as a group for the next uh, 15 minutes. So anybody wants to speak? Yeah. Do so. Well, I look at our conferences are really beautiful conferences. We meet here at least once a year and congratulate ourselves of how beautiful the buildings we're introducing. And uh, every single speaker had uh, put something really beautiful, and I mean really beautiful. But uh, I go back and we're really ignoring the, the problem that we are not the majority. What we see here is just three to four percent, but what is really being built is the core problem, and this is what we have to address. Uh, we are not the problem. I mean, we, in, in here you saw how beautiful all the buildings that have been uh, demonstrated and were really fantastic and beautiful. But I go back again and, and, and look around you and, and see where the problem is. We're not the problem. The problem is, is not those beautiful brains that are sitting here that are producing the best of the best. And we're only talking now about super tall. But how about the tall? I mean, somehow we just forgot about the tall, you know. And we're only talking about the super tall. But the tall buildings are the problem now. Yes, I, I agree with the Saba. I mean, you know, when we design and build the super tall buildings, we strive for the perfection. And I think we are uh, succeeding in that. But like he said, I mean, look at the other existing buildings which are about uh, 20 or 3 years old, and they were not based on the technology that we now have on. So, well, like he said, he, uh, they will come down, and what should we do about it? I mean, do we have to just uh, demolish all of them and uh, build a new building, or do we have to have a kind of uh, renovation technology de fully developed to, to, to solve those problems? I think that you, you raised a very good point about these uh, urban problems. Anybody else to mention any? Uh, yes, yes, please. Uh, I'd like to talk about uh, some uh, challenging uh, issue, and uh, we should uh, solve uh, in window engineering field. So one is a uh, yeah, comprehensive understanding of the mechanism of reduction of the aerodynamic forces to changing the shape. So, so uh, probably it is better to co create some database for the uh, for uh, under good understand better understanding by also uh, by structure engineer also. And uh, another point is a. Uh, and as the plastic uh, behavior of the structure, in, in uh, March we had a uh, severe tsunami and uh, everything was destroyed. And uh, many people said uh, it was beyond expectation. And the uh, tall building is designed uh, against a particular level of wind speed. And uh, basically the, the wind, uh, component, uh, wind force component, we uh, have static component, quadrostatic component, resonant component. The static and quadrostatic has uh, some, uh, and also lasting uh, uh, long period rather than earthquake, one, year, one hour, two hour. So basically we allow the elastic behavior for the st structure. But uh, we should consider the the situation beyond expectation. So plastic behavior of the uh, wind industry, plastic behavior, is a kind of a black, black box. We have no enough knowledge about that. So it may be better to, uh, we should uh, realize that uh, situation and uh, extreme situation should be considered. Because uh, iconic uh, certain tall building, 
never cannot uh, collapse. Uh, so that uh, that is one of the important points. I think he raised a very good question, um, the issue too. I mean, you know, we don't have enough empirical knowledge to analyze the. the, uh, the I mean, to do some. Uh, Things for the unsafe um, tall buildings. I think um, I think that's a very good point. And I have a, a kind of personal question to you. Um, when I uh, was in Japan about two weeks ago, and uh, one of my Japanese colleagues said that uh, the buildings in Tokyo are being renovated from the wood structure to the um, uh, reinforced the concrete structures because the because of this tsunami, they realized that the wood structure is not safe anymore. So they are trying to reinforce the wooden buildings with the, uh, the steel structure. Is that true? I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but now uh, people are very heated. Uh, so just after such a uh, devastating disaster, we should consider the future. Uh, in two years or three years later, we calm down our brain. <laughs> so that otherwise, uh, so very extreme uh, situation. Uh, Eccentric situation is mm -hmm. considered. Okay. So I, I, I never heard you know. about that. So. <laughs> okay. Um, that, well, now let's move on to one of those. So Kathy is one. Yes. Um, I don't know if the, uh, you know that Taipei 101, uh, you know, formerly known as the tallest building, uh, we have just got our Li, uh, existing building uh, certification. Uh, uh, to platinum level certification. So we are now uh, the world's tallest green building. So what's now? I think, I think it's really uh, the obligation of every super tall building to be, uh, to be a green building. Uh, it's, uh, people, people are looking up to you. The whole uh, real estate industry is looking up to you, uh, literally and metaphorically, that uh, we should set an example to the uh, to the other buildings that uh, is a sustainable building is a green building and secondly I think um, existing building is the train uh, I think most of you may be involved in the new construction or co and share uh, design of uh, building or green buildings but uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, the, the major the stock of the property in the city is really uh, existing buildings so I think the, the focus or attention has been shifted to existing buildings but for existing building to be able to achieve uh, any kind of green uh, label or green uh, lead uh, certification, uh, it's very important in the beginning, in the design phase, that some of the features are already designed into the building so that later on they can spend less money and be more efficient. Um, so uh, tell your client, don't, don't, don't try to save money on energy, uh, on, uh, energy efficiency, on water efficiency, or on indoor air quality. It will be money well spent because in the future, uh, it will be, uh, not in the near future, it will be very important. And they don't want to build a super tall building and then be out of date right away. So I think it's very important that uh, um, all, the, all the developers or uh, building owners should be, uh, should be bear in mind that. And, and you as the professionals will be uh, advising your clients to do so. Well, thank you, Kathy. I mean, she has uh, raised a, a very important issue, the sustainability issues. And, and it was amazing to see how many presentations of this conference were centered on the sustainability of the tall buildings. And, and we should be very proud ourselves to, you know, to pursue this issue in our earnest ways. Uh, Mr. Kim, do you have anything to say about the, the, the what we do next? Yes, uh, <clears throat> as I mentioned, this, uh, to deliver this tall building takes a long time. Mm -hmm. So when we design this uh, tall building, we need to consider this uh, flexibility to receive the uh, advanced or developed systems, especially the uh, uh, extra low voltage systems and also MEP systems. Because of this, uh, the uh, time goes by, this, uh, there was uh, more strict regulations, requirements introduced. So that's why the, uh, especially this MEP system and the uh, extra low voltage system should be flexible to receive the uh, advanced the, uh, systems. 
Yeah, I mean, it takes about six or seven years to complete uh, the, the tall buildings. And while they're completing at the time, they're building the, the tall buildings, the technology advances, and the more strict that regulation comes in, so we have to be very flexible about the construct, uh, the building, the tall buildings, I think. Well, our time is almost over, and I have about uh, five minutes, so I was wondering if any of you want to say Anything like uh, the benefits? Or yes, please. Uh, do we have a microphone here, or should I just invite him onto the podium? Well, there is a microphone coming. Well, my question as a, a structural engineer in this field, you know, because I love tall building and super tall building, and we all as a profession gathering here in the conference to, to learn and lesson learn from the conference. We talk about the benefits, about why tall and all this. Uh, I'm just wondering if anybody can answer my question, what are the limits for the tall buildings? Because I always, as a designer, a structural designer, I get the question from everybody, okay, what are the limits for the tall building? If you look at the you know, structural, when you design, there is a limitation for everything, by code, by criteria. Okay, what is the limit of the tall building or super tall? Building? Are you asking the limit of height? Well, or no, limits we, in, in where general? We gonna, where we want to go for the next generation. Okay. Are we have to stop it on the, some limit, you know, as a designer? If clients come and, yeah, I want two kilometers. Yeah, it's possible, but is it really feasible? Is it sustainable? Is it really economies, you know, as it just, because we saw lots of presentation, uh, you know, with a lot of, you know, great designers here, super, super tall building, 1.2 kilometers, you know, is this really that we, we want to go for the future? Okay, I think that's a good, very interesting question, and I was looking for somebody who can answer that uh, question. Okay, Ahmed? Or yes, yes. Oh, okay. I say if you if you think of a tall building as just a single tower, there is a limit on how far you can go. There is an aspect ratio that you have to limit yourself to. That's the first limit you meet. So you can uh, go with a building that is wider pace and can go very tall, just like they build a permit. You can start, but the question is, what is the limit on that? And uh, for example, a Burj Dubai, as an example, is just like stacking bundled systems. You start with the center and you keep adding bundles. So with that, you can keep going as long as you want. And you can go keep going as high as you want. It's become more like a pyramid. It's, just, it's a bundled system. The second aspect of it is, um, uh, you know, then we have a limit in terms of what kind of foundation you have. And based on our experience, um, essentially you end up to a point as long as you keep the pressure to a limit, which means the pace has to be to have a certain limit, you can go as high as you want. Obviously the question is, I'm not talking about psychological impact at this moment. The next generation is, okay, well I can go with this building this height, and this is limit with a single building. The next limit is if I add another building to it, and another building to it, and connected it to create a mega frame. Now the mega frame system, how far you can go, it becomes like a series of columns that you build together, and you can build taller and taller and taller. So essentially, you don't need to make a big footprint. And where, this is where the, where, the, where the benefit of a vertical city uh, come in. So and from a technical standpoint, I don't see really a whole lot of problem that we cannot solve. The most important problem that we will face is really to vertical transportation, how you get people up and down. And this second issue is the psychological impact that you're going to have in, the, uh, uh, on, in people. Do they really want to live that high? You know, and that's, that's another limit in terms of what you can do. Um, but to bring out what are the benefits of uh, to just some of the question is, what's the benefit of building tall? Why tall? I mean, we can't, the human population is, is increasing, increasing in a logarithmic pattern, right? 
And for me, when I look at the tall building, I think no matter where you are, there is a benefit. If you look at the desert, why would I expose everything to the sun? So the structure, the building system that we develop in an area with a very severe climate, it has to have a different kind of approach to it. The example that I gave is Burj Dubai. If I take all the area that we put in Burj Dubai and spread it out, these buildings are not conserve a huge amount of energy. And if we keep spreading out, it's not really sustainable at some point with the, with the increase in population. So we have to consolidate, consolidate infrastructure, consolidate people, consolidate transportation, consolidate these in order to respond to the, to, to the people. The second one is the quality. If you're building one story or 10 story building, the quality that you are gonna get is different from a living in a taller building, okay? So essentially there is a huge amount of benefits actually in a, in, in a very densified cities in terms of sustainability. We always look at the, at the building as, as a whole, but we are not looking at what it takes to build the building. The transportation, we forget. The industry that makes the building, we forget. The building itself, we tend to only look at the building by itself. So I think if we start looking at all of these things, factors, we, we, we can see very clearly, we cannot keep spreading horizontally. We need to just consolidate and reduce the amount of energy and the infrastructure that we need. If I stack 50 stories or 50 levels, what is the exposure of the sun? What is the exposure of the elements? What's the energy that I need to maintain that building? If I take it and spread it horizontally, I guarantee you it's going to be more. Well. Infrastructure, sustainability. Ahmed, thank you very much for your compassion, but you know we have to okay. some that watch but, our but time I mean, here. These, these <laughs> yeah. are the things that. Uh, yeah, well, that I'm, I mean, uh, yeah, our discussion uh, can go on and on all through the night, but uh, uh, unfortunately, we have a uh, time limits. Not the limits of tall buildings, but we have time limits. So I think uh, we have to conclude our session here. So as a moderator of the roundtable uh, session, I think. Uh, I thank all the panelists for their uh, invaluable experiences and visions to share with us. And also want to express my gratitude to all of you who are, the, like I mentioned before, hardcore professionals of the whole buildings uh, to, to be here up until the end of this session. So thank you very much for your uh, participation. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, before you leave this hall, let me change my hat and be a um, chairman of the Seoul organizing, organizing Committee for CTVUH 2011 and give a closing remark here while you're here. For the last three days, we have been indulging ourselves in the intellectual and passionate uh, dialogues and sharing our knowledge and experiences in tall buildings. It will surely make our urban habitat better than ever. A total of 950 people from 40 different countries have registered in this conference. We have had 10 keynote speeches, 136 paper presentations, and 48 media interactive presentations. And what's more, we have held the first international student design competition in this conference for the future generation of tall buildings. I sincerely hope that you have also enjoyed our social and community building events throughout the conferences. Finally, I would like to thank Professor Sangde Kim and his associates at the uh, CTVUH and the members of Seoul Organization Committee and MESI. And I also really appreciate the sponsors for their generos generosity. Lastly, please let me introduce the architectural student volunteers who have worked diligently and very passionately throughout these conferences. They were wearing the blue t-shirts. Could you stand up? <laughs> Let's give them a big... Uh, well. <laughs> Thank you very much. 
Uh, there are future generation of tall buildings, and a uh, uh, total of uh, more than 50 students volunteer to work here, but now we have only seven uh, or about 10 people, uh, 10 students are left. But they are from all over Korea, and they learned a lot with us. Um, the future of tall buildings really depends on them. Now, the CTVUH 2011 is officially closed. Thank you very much for your participation. Thank you. And we will meet a year from now in Shanghai. Thank you.